How's it going guys? Welcome to today's video. Today we are doing some mint recording. So we've got the samplers here attached onto the units. And they're taking a little bit of sample off each cow. We're going to be taking off these samples today and recording the yields of the cows. And then those samples are going to be sent away to get tested for their butter fat, their protein, their cell count. And then we can get information on all of the individual cows. This is our fourth milk recording, so we're going to be doing five all together. We'll be doing one in a couple of weeks. We got our milk recording done there this morning. That's really important now coming into drying off. It'll really help us uh, pick what cows are going to be getting dry cow treatment, antibiotic dry cow treatment, and what cows are suitable for cedar only. Really, it's mainly for the heifers and the ones that are going to be dried off early this month. We're going to do another milk recording in a few weeks. Uh, we want to have our milk recordings within four weeks of drying off the cows so we have accurate information on the cow cell count um, before we dry off or close to dry off to help with whether she needs select uh, sealer only or dry cow treatment as well. Any cows who are cell count is under 90,000 and has con consistently been under that and hasn't had any issues with mastitis infections, they'll get sealer only. For the younger cows, we will be a little bit more strict. Uh, it will be 60,000 on the cell count. And then the other thing we will do is on the morning of drying off, those cows who are getting sealer only will be CMT tested, the California milk test, on the morning of the dry off, just in case. Uh, that'll pick up if anything has changed between their milk recording and when they're drying off, uh, which I think is also very important. The last thing we want to do is for a cow who was low cell count to pick up a little bit of an infection, even if it's only very small, right at the end of her lactation just before she dries off and we only give her sealer only. Small bit of silage left here I'm going to push in what they couldn't reach and they can finish it up this evening. Probably just going to push it in with the brush rather than opening all the gates and bringing down the loader because it's only a tiny bit if there's any heavy bits I'll just push it in with the bob man. In my last video I did talk about how we opened the silage pit, started feeding silage and we saw an increase in production from the cows and we put it down to the extra fiber and stuff that's in the silage slowing down the digestive system in the cows so they got more out of the grass and meal and everything else they were eating and we were really surprised and really happily surprised with that outcome but i was a bit disappointed in the results of the silage and i wasn't 100 percent sure i was on the fence whether it was right or wrong and really the truth in it came as we started to increase the silage, we finished feeding palm kernel and we started to feed more silage. Once the silage and diet went over two kilos uh, per cow per day, it did. they did start to drop back in production again, which kind of makes me think that the re test results that we got that are in my last video on our third cut silage uh, were probably accurate. They're probably a little bit underestimated because the cows do seem to like it but they're probably not far off so i'm not going to really test it again we'll be into the second cut from that field in that pit soon and i will be taking test results on that and hopefully it's a little bit better but hard to know so what can we do next year should we be trying to get better from our third cut or should we be doing different things differently i think with some of the things i'll do maybe differently we'll see how it's going at the time but maybe introduce kilo and a half or two kilos of silage into the diet earlier on even from the start of October because we did seem to get a benefit out of it but hopefully not have to feed too much and the other thing is if we could feed better silage maybe if it's first cut uh, maybe we can put better first cut in this pit here or change things around so that it's first cut silage we're feeding to cows and hopefully have it that high 70s DMD then we won't see as much of a negative impact when that silage starts to increase in the diet then that won't be an issue with having to improve our third cut anything because that silage as a test results is perfect for the dry cows. So hopefully some areas for improvement next year, which is exciting. 
and plenty to learn from this year. I was really focusing on making better quality silage. I think we did most things right not sure if there's anywhere we could really improve we didn't use an additive on the silage so maybe some people say the test results would be higher if we use an additive but is there any need to use an additive if i can get higher quality in my first cut and feed that to milking cows and just have my third cut and second cut going to my dry cows but for the moment this is what we're feeding cows are happy out in it go and give it a little bit of push in We started feeding the silage there would be very little silage out here where they couldn't reach because it wasn't as much and what there was i pushed in with a brush as well but it actually had a wider head on it than this one but then it broke doesn't look like a lot of silage there now but 45 spans of that it's busy enough 